Hey guys, so we're now gonna be looking at question nine, right? So again, we're looking at geometry. Here we're given a circle and we're given a bunch of lines. Let's see what they've told us about this shape. So it says, or this diagram, it says in the diagram, zero is the center of the circle. Important, right? Because it means that any line from the center to the circumference is a radius. Important, okay? Then it says ST is a tangent, right? So that's a tangent to the circle at T, M and P are points on the circle, M and P, okay, such that T, M and M, P equal each other. So it's basically telling us that this is an isosceles triangle, okay? Should, you should automatically think that, right? You have two equal sides, means that this angle is going to equal this angle. You should be thinking that automatically, okay? Then we have O, T, O, P and T, P are drawn, right? Those are just different lines. And then it says, let O, 1 equal X, Okay, so we've kind of looked at the scenario. Let's see what they're asking us to prove. So it says prove with reasons. Again, that's re you should know that you must use reasons. That S, that angle STM is a quarter X, right? So what are we interested in? Let's highlight what we're interested in. STM. So that is what we're interested in. We're interested in T1. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Okay, so we want to kind of get from X over here all the way to there. So what we should do is let's try and go from there. And we know that this, this um, is, we can use that rule, right? Which says that the angle at the center is two times the angle at the circumference, right? So let's just label this angle here. So this angle here is going to be 360 minus X, okay? And, and that's just angles around a point, right? So let's start writing this down, right? We don't have to do the whole <laughs> the whole question before we start writing it down. Even if you start and you're like, oh, you get lost, it's better to write it down because it helps you with a bit of logic. Okay. So we're going to say O2 equals 360 minus X, right? And we say angles around a point, okay? Then we say, well, M, angle M, equals 360 minus X all over 2, right? Because angle at center is 2 times, right, angle at circumference. You should remember that reason, okay? So basically it says, whatever this angle is here, this angle here is half of it, okay? So let's just neaten that up a little bit. So M equals 180 minus X over 2. Okay, so we have that. Let's just write that in. So this one over here is 180 minus X over 2. Okay, but we know that in this triangle, right, P1 and T2 equal each other. Okay, because it is an isosceles triangle. Okay. Shouldn't come as a surprise that it's isosceles because we were told that this equals this. We were given that, right? So we say, well, right, x over 2 times by a half, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm basically making it half because now we have to say whatever's, um, we're saying 180 minus this amount, right? If we take this amount and we divide it by 2, right? then all of those add up to 180, okay? So I'm basically saying 180 minus x over 2 plus x over 2 equals 180, which should, which should make sense to you, right? So I'm basically saying this x over 2 equals t2 plus p1, okay? And we know that those two, t2 equals p1, therefore, right, that equals x over 2, times a half, which is x over 4. Okay, so you should be following that logic, right? It's all about angles in a triangle. Remember, angles in a triangle equal 180, right? So these things shouldn't be coming, shouldn't come as a surprise, right? This is all stuff that we learned when we were like in grade 8. Okay, so we're going to say x over 2 times 2, which equals x over 4, right, equals t, um, t, what is it, t2, which equals P1, and I'm going to say angles in an 
isosceles triangle. Okay, so now we have angles in an isosceles triangle. Okay, so let's write in what we have. So this here is x over 4. This is x over 4. Okay, now what you should know, right, is that this is 90 degrees because this is a radius. This is also a radius, right? And remember, when a tangent hits the circumference and there's a radius, this is 90 degrees, right? So we know also that this equals this, don't we? Okay? So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, well, we know that T3 plus T2 plus T1 equals 90 degrees, right? And we're going to say tangent perpendicular to radius, okay? Now, we know what T2 equals, right? But let's work out what T3 equals, right? So T3, right, um, let's just put it over here. I'm actually going to write it over here. Do we have a little bit more? Oh, we don't have any more space. So I'm just going to say here, T3 plus P2 plus X, equals 180, right, because of angles in a triangle, okay, we know that, because x plus t3 plus p2 should equal 180, right, angles in a triangle, but we know that t3 equals p2 because of isosceles triangle, so we actually have 2 p2, oh, we can just say 2 t3, um, equals 180 minus x, okay? So then T3 equals 90 minus x over 2, okay? So now we know what T2 equals. Let's just see what we've got here. We have T2, T2 equals this. We have the T3 equals this. And we want to work out what T1 is. So I'm going to do it up here because I don't have much space, right? So I'm going to go over here. So I'm going to say T3 plus T2 plus T1 equals 90. Okay. So T3, we said is 90 minus X over 2 plus X over 4, because that's what T2 equals, plus T1 equals 90 degrees. Okay. So now these two 90s cancel, right? I'm going to bring these two over this side. So it's become x over 2 minus x over 4 equals t1. Therefore, t1 equals x over 4. And we have proven what we need to. Okay. So there's many ways you can go about this, right? This is quite a lengthy way that I went about it. There are other ways you can do it. But I just wanted to make it sort of as intuitive as possible. So let's just quickly run through what we went through. We said angles around a point, right, to so get O2. Then we said, okay, um, angle at the center is two times the angle of the circumference. So M over here equals half of that, right? So M equals 180 minus X over 2. Then we said, okay, we know that M is one angle in this triangle, and it's an isosceles triangle, right? So this X over 2 over here, right, if you divide that by 2, you'll get what each of those other angles in that isosceles triangle is, okay? So then we got T2 and P1 both equal X over 4. So that's that, okay? Then what we said is we said, okay, we know that a tangent is, the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So we know that T3 plus T2 plus T1 equals 90, okay? We worked out what T3 was, we had what T2 was, and then we just worked out T1. Now, instead of going, this is one option here, giving you one option. The second option you could have done for T1, right, is you could have said, well, T1, right, equals, right, T1 equals P1, okay? T1 equals P1 because of tan chord, right? So if you look here, right, T1 and P1, equal each other because of tan chord, therefore, T1 equals X over 4. 
So you can use this quite lengthy method I did with the tangent and the radius, or you can identify tan chord. But sometimes it's difficult to identify tan chord because you have to do a little bit of a switcheroo. But I just wanted to give you two different options of doing this geometry question. Again, don't freak out when you have questions like this. Even if you just get to this point, right, and then you don't see tan chord, you still get quite a few marks, okay? So don't panic. Do what you can. Try to be as methodical as possible. Try to work a little bit more neatly than I do. But that should give you some ideas of how to approach these questions. Okay, I hope that's helpful. We're almost done with the paper. Cool, perfect. Cheers, guys.